the Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce presents the Bowie Business Journal, a program designed to keep our community informed about important business and economic issues. Hello, I'm Bert Oliver and welcome to Bowie Business Journal. And today we have some guests that are going to talk to us about doing business in Bowie and what is happening with businesses in Bowie. And they're also members of the Bowie Chamber, Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce. So Cindy, if you will, and Elena, start telling us about, well let's start with you Cindy. Tell us about your business, what you do. I own Maryland Secretarial Services and I'm a virtual assistant. I work for my home. I've been doing that since 1997. And um, I provide word processing, data entry, desktop publishing, and transcription services to businesses, individuals, nonprofits, and government agencies. Great. So, Elena? Hi, um, I'm Elena Heinley. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. So I help people with their investments and their financial goals and plans for any short-term goals and, uh, most importantly, retirement. Good. That's great. How long have you been a member of the Chamber? Um, I guess for about 10 months, so almost a year, a little less mm -hmm. than a year. And, of course, Edward Jones was a member for a very long time. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure who it was a manager at the time when they joined, but it's been probably 12, 15 years. Cindy, tell us a little bit about when you were talking about all of the clients, and all, tell us what you did before you started your business. My one and only full-time job was at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I was there for 25 years. Wow. <laughs> well, how long have you had Maryland Sectel Services up I, and going? I'm sorry, I started in 1997. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And you feel that it was a good move for you to do that? Oh, definitely. Good. Well, you've been hanging in there a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any particular uh, ideas for a person that might be viewing this, that might be thinking, like you made a decision at one time, be thinking of the concerns they have about the type business or, or if they can actually make it in business? Uh, what, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to say just how you felt, how you made that decision when no doubt you had family and you needed a job, and she, you decided to make your own job and your own future. Uh, what decisions, and did you have any, too many questions at the time, or did you just plunge into it? <laughs> Actually, I started out part-time uh -huh. for three years while I was working with my, my day job. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, basically what I did was I started the, the, um, the company part-time while I was working full-time. Mm -hmm. And that enabled me to build my client base mm -hmm. and get to know what, how to start a business. Well, you know, that's an interesting point, Elena. And I think we'll, another point on that is I meet a lot of people that want to go into business that they don't have any knowledge of. And uh, what would either one of you suggest someone that would like, they want to go into a business and they really don't have any knowledge of it and do you recommend that they try to get some experience in that particular field, or how would they go about gaining experience if they didn't have some background in it? Well, I guess my opinion on that is it depends on, I really truly believe if someone is passionate about what they want to do, um, you find ways, obviously every business is different, um, you find ways to get that training and that experience, but I truly believe if you look at all the success stories, whether it's someone that has their own business, whether it's athletes, um, if you're truly passionate about it and you work hard at that, you can achieve it and you don't give up. I mean, that whole, it sounds kind of corny, but it's true. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the business. I know with mine, I have my own business kind of with the backing of a firm. And mm -hmm. so there was training and support like that. But I had to, you know, go on my own and, you know, if you want something bad enough, you, you do it. You let people know about you mm -hmm. and your business and um, treat people well. 
And it just kind of goes back to basics like that. Mm -hmm. And meeting wonderful people and starting a business in the Bowie area has been fantastic. And the Chamber of Commerce um, in Bowie has been wonderful. I was surprised at how supportive they are and the wonderful people I've met um, in the Chamber of Commerce. But the area, people are very welcoming. So if you're really passionate about what you do and you know that you have a service, you can help people, um, I, I think that people should go for it, basically. <laughs> no, you're right. And it sounds just like what Cindy did. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to say, when we started the chamber, I was the first full-time president. That's 25 years. The president, um, after six months, he just said, I'm giving up, Bert. But although we were small, we still started out, I think, with 100 members. It, it took a lot of effort, a volunteer effort from every officer there. And, and then, of course, after we hired Betsy Burian, you remember her. Mm -hmm. I don't guess you've ever met her, but she was the, our first uh, executive director. And she just was absolutely dynamic. Uh, so that helped. And when she had people come to her, as an example, uh, she had a woman that was uh, not a member of the chamber, that had contacted the chamber because they had a business idea. And she asked me if I would, I have, have a business consulting firm at one time, business brokerage, and she asked me if I was willing to talk to her. Well, I went and met her in a house in, uh, up in Marlboro, and she wanted to start a business to shop for people. Actually take their lifts and go to the grocery store and shop. She had children in school, and she was trying to find something to fit that after the children got on the bus to the time they got off the bus. And we sat down and chatted a while, and someone had uh, contacted her about letting them handle it, uh, copyright and everything, you know. The idea was great, and she had more than just that as an idea. Right? But it was an unusual thing. And of course, I encouraged her to move along with it. Hardly any investment. She already had two or three clients, and they were referring her to other clients. And she would just go do their shopping. So then as a result of that, it sort of opened up a lot of her creative ability and she invented something. And I was working with her with benefit personally, except personal benefit. And she had actually come up with an idea for the rings and uh, baby uh, things that have the bars because she'd read a story about a, a baby getting his head, their head stuck between those bars. They've improved them now, the manufacturers. Uh, and she invented something that would literally snap on to those rings that were soft, padded, and she invented that herself. And she started making them. And she said, you know, her children uh, even would, uh, when they were bare toddlers and they were just barely walking down the stairs, they literally almost get their heads stuck between the railing on the stair casing. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden this blossomed to an idea for her. I don't know how far it went because I referred it to people to professional companies that would buy her idea uh, and manufacture it. And she continued doing it. And I don't know, I haven't talked to her in many, many years. But that was through the Chamber of Commerce recognizing that maybe someone in the Chamber can give them some advice. Mm -hmm. And it was a great idea. Uh, if, you, if, you used to, if you've been around children, you'll know what she was talking about. Yeah. You know, and about that one instance, the child getting their head caught in there and they had to break the things to get the child's head out. But this other idea of the home shopping thing for people spring, were springing up all over the country doing that. And then, of course, now the major change, uh, literally, right. you can order by phone and so forth. And those things spur some time from just some communication at the chamber with the chamber members. That's just a thought. And another idea on career day, our members, as you know, are invited to appear at career days around the school. And I was at Bowie High School one time, and this young man came up, I was representing the chamber, and said he was interested in going to landscape business. Now this is back in uh, 82. And he just didn't know how to get started. He wanted to go into commercial landscape. And, and he had been doing some things during the summer, and apparently he liked that. 